Hey, what's going on everyone? It's Stranger here and welcome to another YouTube music production video. And in today's video, we're going to be doing some more grimy, folk horn sounding bass sounds with a synth I'm very excited about, which is Arteria's Pigments 2. Now, they're offering the synth for a free trial for 90 days actually. So I really encourage you guys to go to Arteria's website and check it out. I'm using the trial version as well and I'm loving the results. It's one of the best sounding synths I've heard in a while. There's something very round, very analog, almost transparent about the sound that it creates. And I'm really excited to be making some grimy sounds with this synthesizer. But before we get started, please hit the like and subscribe button it really helped my channel grow so I can keep doing this and if you enjoyed this video I encourage you guys to share it as well and without further ado let's get started with some pigments all right so this is pigments here and it has a really beautiful interface and with today's video we're gonna be doing a little more advanced type of grimy foghorn sounds so if you haven't seen the first foghorn video I encourage you guys to check that out so you can get some basics down in terms of the foghorn I'm just gonna jump into the preset section and under template we're going to select the default so that we set everything to default now i'm going to go into the engine there now there's two engines it's kind of equivalent to say in serum how you have oscillator one and two in pigments you have engine one and two the only difference with the engines here is that you can choose between using an analog engine which gives you the basic sine sawtooth triangle and square waveforms and you have three different oscillators in one engine which is pretty awesome and then if you go under wavetable then you have one wavetable here however you also have a modulator which is also another oscillator which you could use and then finally you can actually use samples as your engine so this would result in some pretty crazy sounds where you can use organic sounding samples to add some more texture to your sound design for today's video we're going to focus on using the wavetable engine and then you can flip between the different wavetables by clicking on it or dragging on this position button here and that'll allow us to zone in on the different waveforms so I'm going to use the square wave here. Now I'm going to apply some FM synthesis to this engine. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to increase the FM amount here. And you can notice the harmonics increasing as I increase the FM amount. Now the next step is to adjust the modulator of the FM synthesis. So notice that there's a line here pointing to this modulator area. So this is another oscillator and currently this oscillator is set to negative 70 so you won't hear this oscillator. However it's being used to modulate this waveform. So remember when we learned about FM synthesis you have a modulator waveform and then you have a carrier so the main waveform here would be the carrier and then your modulator will be here. So I'm going to increase the pitch of my modulator and I'm going to bring it up to 36. So that's three octaves up. However, you could also increase it by 12 or 24, which would be one or two octaves. So it just changes the tonality of the harmonics when you're using FM synthesis. So I can show you the amount as you, as you change the amount of FM synthesis, all, that also affects the tonality. Now we're gonna go into the unison mode on the left here, and you can increase it to a total of eight voices. I recommend anywhere between three to eight. I found this is what sounds best with pigments. And notice you can go in between steps too, so you can have 6.5 voices. Now you can adjust the detune of the voices. That's just the tuning spread of each voice. The higher the detune, the more phasing that occurs. 
So I usually like my detune a bit lower, so the voices are a bit closer together. Around 4% works. Now I'm gonna apply a filter to this entire engine. So on the right here is my filter and you can adjust the cutoff. And then you can adjust a bit of resonance to fatten up that filter. Now under this drop down under mode here, there's different filter modes. You can try the low pass 6, 12, 24, up to 36. There's of course also other filter modes such as high pass, band pass, but we're just gonna stick to the low passes for today. The 36 gives you a stronger slope, so an even more rounded sound. So whatever your preference is. Okay, now the next step is we're gonna apply some filter modulation using one of the envelopes. And I'm gonna be using envelope two because envelope one here is dedicated to the amplitude. Now the modulation matrix where you map the envelopes in pigments is a bit different from other synthesizers. So it is a bit tricky at first, but notice that there's this row of kind of like buttons here. And this is essentially the modulation matrix. And there's a button for every modulation source. So if we click on envelope two here, we're now adjusting the mappings for envelope two. Now, the moment we hover over a parameter, notice that there's a ring around this filter cutoff. So now when we click and drag, this adjusts the modulation amount. Now notice a box now pops up here, which indicates the mapping to the filter one cutoff to envelope two, and it shows the amount here. So now we can actually control it from here as well. So we can click and drag up to increase the amount. And say if you wanna go back and remove the mapping, you, then you can just hit X and now delete the mapping to uh, filter cutoff. So we can go back and drag and that increases the amount. Now under here is our envelope two parameters so we can adjust the decay. And then you can adjust the curve of that decay with the button below, which is the decay curve. We can play with the attack if you want. Right, so all your basic envelope buttons are accessible here. Okay, now we're gonna go into the FX section, which you can find at the top right here where it says FX, so click there. Now in the FX section, you'll notice that there's a bus A, bus B, and a send bus. And within each of these buses, you can insert three different effects. Notice when I click on bus B here, now we have three different effects that we can apply to bus B. But we're only using bus A here, so I'm just gonna click back to bus A. And then I'm gonna turn off the reverb here, and I'm gonna change the delay to an overdrive, or actually a distortion. So in this drop down here, we can then change delay to distortion, and then just increase the drive. I find somewhere around here, around 26 dB is enough. However, you can go higher if you want a more grungy kind of sound. Okay, now the next step is I'm gonna go back to the synth section and I'd like to apply an LFO to the filter cutoff. So remember to do that, we first select the modulation source, which is LFO one here. And then we go into the destination, which would be the cutoff. And we hover over until we see that ring and we click and drag up. Now we're increasing the amount. Notice now the LFO controlling the filter cutoff. So now we can go into the LFO section by clicking on the bottom here. Notice that there are a number of different tabs. I'm gonna click the LFO tab. Now we can see the LFOs. And we are using LFO one here. And now you can adjust the shape. But I like the sine wave. And then you can adjust the rate and you can choose from more of a freeform Hertz or sync, which is sync to a beat. 
then you have triplets and dotted. So I can try triplets, and perhaps we can try quarter note triplets. That sounds cool. And then you can also add a fade, which just means it slowly introduces the LFO. So if we increase the fade, and you can notice that LFO slowly trickle in. So as you increase the fade amount, the longer it takes the LFO to really get to full intensity. Now lastly, I'm gonna add an additional envelope to my filter cutoff. Now I'm gonna try a different type of envelope. They call it a function here. So if you click under the functions here, now you see this um, kind of envelope here. And the difference with this kind of envelope is that you can add multiple points. So it's kind of like the serum LFO function where you turn the LFO into an envelope and you can add different points. So the first step is I'm gonna select that this envelope runs only once here. So that's the play mode. So you can choose from one loop and run. Now I'm gonna just use one because I only want that to run once. And now I'm gonna change the rate to two bars. So that's two over one. Now I'm gonna bring this dot over here so that the envelope will rise up. Now you can adjust the slope by clicking this little two arrow icon and click and drag up. Now I'm gonna go into the modulation matrix and click function one, and then I'm gonna increase the cutoff amount for function one. Maybe increase it a little more. So notice the cutoff slowly increase as I hold the note. I'll increase it a little more so you can hear it more drastically. So that sound slowly grows. I'm just gonna dial it back a bit. And actually I might want this to be a four bar loop. So it actually is a longer Reese note. Okay, just so you can see, you can click anywhere on the line to create additional points and then now we can have an attack at the beginning. And to remove the points, you can just right click on the point. And actually I like it how it sounds as is. Now I actually want to apply some pitch modulation to this Reese. So I'm gonna actually use this function one. So I'm gonna click back to the modulation matrix and under function one, I'm gonna go under the course tune, which is the tuning of the entire engine one, and I'm just gonna increase it to 0 0.02. That just means it's moving up by two semitones. Okay, that sounded great. Now I'm feeling that it needs some reverb, so I'm gonna go back into our effects section, and now I'm gonna turn that reverb back on. You can either click the on button here, or here, and that turns it on. And then we can adjust the dry wet signal, which is the amount of reverb. And then we can adjust the size, which is how spacious the sounds. And the decay is just the length of the reverb tail as well. We can also add some pre-delay, which delays the reverb signal. And then the damping adjusts the coloration of the reverb. So if you bring it all the way up, then you remove all these high frequencies from the reverb signal. And if we bring it down, you get some of those higher frequencies. So I say anywhere in between would sound good. And then the input high pass is quite useful, especially for bass design, because sometimes we don't want to reverb those lower frequencies because then that kind of muddies up the signal. So having a high pass is nice because it removes all those low sub frequencies. So it only adds reverb to the frequencies above this amount, which is at around 200 Hertz. And that's pretty good. Okay, that's sounding great. So I'm just gonna go and 
add some notes and I believe I have some notes written already. It's a G zero note and it's playing for four bars. I just have a quarter note pause before the note plays. So let's just hear how it sounds with the beat. Okay, it sounded pretty good. However, I'm noticing that because we have unison mode on, some of those sub frequencies are phasing, causing the sub to fluctuate in and out. So a trick I like to use to remedy this is to layer this with a pure sub note. So to do this, we're gonna click on pigments here and then you can hit on group or you can hit command or control G and this will send it to an instrument rack. So now we're gonna click on this button here with the three dots and lines and this brings up the instrument rack. And if you click on pigments here, we can hit control or command D and that duplicates it. So now we have two of the same instruments layered together. Now I'm gonna rename this as sub. Now I'm gonna mute this track first and then I'm gonna go under pigments and then here I'm gonna drag EQ8 directly into this line. So this applies EQ8 only to the first pigments here. Now I'm just gonna solo this and now I'm gonna hit under EQ1 and bring the frequency up anywhere between the 100 to 200 hertz that just removes all the low frequencies. Say around 140 might work for this sound. Okay, now I'm gonna mute this. Now go back to the sub and turn that on. And now I'm gonna bring pigments back. Now here, I'm gonna turn off all the effects because I don't actually need any of the effects on. I just want a pure sub signal. So we can turn off the distortion here, turn off the reverb, and actually you can just turn it all off by clicking this on button here. And then go under the synth section and under the unison mode, we wanna turn this off as well. We just need one oscillator playing a sub bass frequency. So turn that off. We're also gonna turn off FM synthesis. So click this knob and drag all the way down. Great. Now you notice a clear sub bass frequency here. Now we can actually use the sine wave or a square wave. It's up to you. I'll just show you how it'll sound with a sine wave. Now I'm gonna bring the top bass back. Notice how much cleaner it sounds. Now I'm just gonna bring the sub back and show you that you can also use a square wave as the sub bass. That just adds a little more harmonics on top of the sub. You could also bring the cutoff down a bit so you can shave off some of those harmonics. Now you can go into the sub and bring an additional EQ8 directly on this pigments. And then you could increase some of those sub frequencies anywhere to between 30 to 90 Hertz I find works. And now you don't want to overdo it. So you bring it back down anywhere between one to three, I think would be good. Notice how much rounder and clear the sub bass sounds now with the top bass. Now let's hear it all together. Okay, I'm liking the results. And again, this is more of the advanced steps to creating the foghorn sound. And we are doing it today with Pigments 2, which is available for free trial for 90 days. So I really encourage you to go check it out on the Arteria website. It's an amazing synth. I'm loving how round and analog it sounds. I encourage you guys to try it out while it's available for free. And let me know in the comments section how you guys did and also what you'd like to learn in future videos. And remember, if you haven't already, please like and subscribe. It'll really help my channel grow. And until then, keep practicing and we'll see you at the next video.